Using an Arduino, like this one, to drive a small LED or a tiny little servo is easy to do. But what if you want to use one of these boards to control bigger, more powerful things, like let's say the lights in a room or some kind of large electric motor? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Okay, so today we're going to use this little Arduino board to control this old table fan over here. Now obviously, in order to do that, we're going to need to use some extra hardware because this little board doesn't have nearly enough power to directly drive this fan. It can't supply 240 volt AC and it also can't supply nearly enough current for this motor. So therefore, we're going to use a device called a relay which is what I have right here. So for those of you who don't know what a relay is, a relay is essentially a power switch, except this switch isn't manually operated by some kind of mechanical lever. This one is operated by sending an electrical signal to it. Now, this particular relay is specifically designed to be used with Arduinos and other you know, small 5 volt microcontrollers. And that makes it really easy to use because that means you can just plug this straight into your Arduino, as you'll see in a moment. Um, and you don't need any kind of additional circuitry or electronics to get it to work. But now, of course, the question is, how do you actually wire this thing up? Well, as you can see on both sides, we've got two screw terminal blocks. Now, this side is the high voltage or the high power side that is going to connect to the things that we want to switch, so the, the table fan and the power outlet in this case. This side is the low power or low voltage side, and it's going to connect to our Arduino, so this is what we use to control uh, the relay. Now the weird thing about this is that the power side has three, uh, three ports on it, which is kind of strange, because if you think about it, a switch has two ports, right? So why does this have three? Well, the reason is that this is a two-way switch. So, there are three connections labeled normally open, common, and normally closed. And what that means is, when this relay is doing nothing, so when you do not send a control signal to the relay, the common port is connected to the normally closed port. When you do send a signal to it, then it switches between COM and normally open. So if you wire up your circuit through the common port and the normally open port, the relay behaves exactly like an ordinary switch, right? The switch turns on when you send the control signal, and when you stop sending that control signal, the switch turns off. Simple as that. If you wire up the circuit through the normally closed port, well, then it's exactly the other way around, right? So the circuit is always on, and then when you send the control signal, it actually turns off. So, personally, I like to use normally open whenever I can, because it avoids confusion. But there are some specific situations where you might want to use normally closed. Uh, today, we're just going to be using normally open, so we're just not going to touch that normally closed port. So now let's take a look at the, um, the low voltage or low power side of the relay, the signal side. So it also has three pins. Two of them are power pins, so positive and negative. Those will simply wire up to the power ports of the 5 volt and 0 volts on the Arduino. And then one final pin, which says, in this case, it says in. On some other relay boards, it might say S or signal or input or whatever. And this is the pin that actually controls the relay. So this is where we send our control signal to, to trigger the switch. So before we start wiring it all up, it's always a good idea to make a simple uh, circuit diagram, just to make sure that what you've come up with actually makes sense. Uh, this is especially important if you're working with mains power like we're doing here. You know, the voltage is high, the power level is high, uh, mistakes can lead to being electrocuted or causing a fire. So you want to make sure you get things right. Now this right here is a circuit diagram that I came up with. So right here we have the power source, so basically the outlet that we're going to plug things into. Then over here we've got the load, which is the table fan that I just showed you. And then over here we've got the relay, which sits in between those two and acts like a switch. 
And then as you can see, we've got our control wires. The zero goes to the ground on the Arduino. The positive goes to the five volt pin on the Arduino. And the, well, I've labeled it S here for signal, but input, whatever the hell you want to call it, goes to pin number eight on the Arduino, simply because I've picked number eight. It could be any pin you like. Um, so without further ado, let's wire this up. Okay, so right here we've got the relay module, we've got the Arduino to control it, and we've got some cables that go to our fan and to a power plug. So this cable right here is connected to the table fan that you just saw. So as you can see, it no longer has a power plug on it because I think I ended up cutting that off for some project. I, I can't really remember why I did that. The point is, it's got some open wire sticking out of it, which is perfect for today's project. And then we've also got this power cord, which does have a plug on it, and it also has open wires on the other side. So this is gonna plug into an, an outlet to power the, the fan, right? So first of all, we're going to take the live wire from our uh, power cord and connect that to the common port of the relay. Then we're going to take the live wire that goes to our electric motor from the table fan and we're going to plug that into the normally open port on the relay. The neutral wires we're going to tie together with this clamp. There you go, that is our relay wired up, at least on the power side. Now, you might be wondering, should you wire up the relay to live or neutral? Well, generally speaking, you wire up the relay on the live side of the circuit. However, as you might have noticed in this case, we're using a power plug that can plug in both ways. So it really doesn't matter on which side I wire up this relay because I don't know what ends up being live or neutral anyway. Now I should also point out that if you're actually going to use a relay module like this uh, in a permanent situation, you need to actually put it inside a proper box to keep it safe. Not only to protect the relay itself from the elements, but also to make sure that no one can touch these exposed live contacts on the bottom. So right now I'm not going to bother doing that because I'm going to take this apart as soon as I'm done making this video. But if you're actually going to install something like this, obviously it needs to be protected properly. Right, so now let's wire this up to the Arduino. So this is our ground wire, so it goes into the ground socket on the Arduino. This is 5 volts, so it goes to a 5 volt pin, which I think is over here. And finally, this one goes to our control pin, which is going to be pin 8, as I just said. So it's going to go right there. So there you go. That's all the hardware ready for use. Now we just need to upload some code to this Arduino to actually make it activate the fan. So I've uploaded a little program to the Arduino, um, and here's what that program looks like. So it starts to initiate pin number 8 as an output um, and then what it does is it waits for 10 seconds, um, then it turns pin number 8 on, it waits for another 10 seconds, and then it turns pin number 8 off again. And then it repeats that, so it waits for another 10 seconds, turns it on, waits for another 10 seconds, and it just keeps going like that in an infinite loop. So if all goes to plan, what should happen when I turn the Arduino on is the fan should not do anything for 10 seconds, then it turns on, it keeps running for 10 seconds, it then turns off, it then waits for 10 seconds again, and then it comes back on, and it keeps going like that forever. So let's see if it works. I'm just going to plug it in. Like that. Just grab the fan so you can see what it's doing. Hopefully it's going to turn on soon. There you go. <laughs> it actually works and I sound very funny I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone but 
Now, of course, this is an incredibly simple piece of software. We're just turning a fan on and off periodically. Um, but you can imagine that you can do all kinds of fancy things with this. So you can actually, let's say that you had a temperature sensor, you can turn on the fan when the temperature reaches a certain am amount, or like a smoke detector, when there is a certain amount of smoke in the air, turn on the exhaust fan, something like that. Uh, so you can build really powerful automatic systems using an Arduino and a bunch of relays. Now one final thing that we should talk about is switching high power inductive loads. So an inductive load is basically an electric motor most of the time. Now this fan is also an inductive load but it's such a small inductive load that this problem isn't really a thing. Uh, but this is something you have to think about when you're going to switch bigger electric motors. So what's going to happen is Let's say we have this schematic again, but this time this is a really powerful uh, electric motor of some kind. Now, because that's an inductive load, the electric current wants to keep going through that motor. But as soon as you open the relay contact, as soon as you turn the relay off, of course the current is stopped by the relay, but it doesn't want to. And therefore we're going to get a massive voltage spike across that relay, which is going to cause electric arcing inside of it, which damages the contacts. Now, the relay will survive that, probably. Um, it might even survive it 10 times or 100 times. But it won't last very long if that happens every single time you turn that big motor off. So in that case, what you can do is you can use something called a snubber. <laughs> so a snubber is a network of passive components that absorbs the voltage spike and keeps the relay safe. So basically what it consists of is a capacitor followed by a re resistor. Actually I should use this I should use a single type of resistor symbol in my drawings, right? There we go. That's what it looks like. So when that voltage spike comes in that's going to be absorbed by that capacitor and the energy is dissipated through that resistor. So you can build this yourself quite easily from a capacitor and a resistor. There are websites on the internet you can use to find the correct values for these. You can also buy them as an off-the-shelf module, kind of like the relay module, except it's a snubber module. <laughs> I guess they also, I haven't seen them, but they must sell relay boards with built-in snubbers on them too, but that's something you have to consider if you're going to use uh, a relay to control large electric motors. If you happen to use a solid-state relay, which is a relay with no mechanical parts, you don't need this. So solid-state relay is also a really good option if you're going to switch large uh, induction motors, or actually any kind of large motor. It doesn't have to be an induction type. Um, so I, I think that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Um, and of course, thank you for watching. I'm going to find the cap for this marker now.